Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to take a look at Adobe Photoshop 10. Is it worth the upgrade? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the Adobe Photoshop Elements site and take a look at some of the new features. The first thing that they tout is the ability to paint an effect on just one area of the picture without affecting the other. Now this has always been available with smart brushes, but they have added 30 new options. In the guided tour arena, they added the ability to shallow the depth of field and they put a new cool glowing feature called the Orton effect. As far as text is concerned, you can now add your text to curves, shapes, lines, and different selections. For the organizer, you have the ability to tag your friends directly from the organizer to Facebook. If you're searching for an item, you can now search for it in the organizer. There are different composition and crop guides, and you can now use the rule of thirds or the golden ratio to be able to see your photos in the rule of thirds. The more powerful organizer also has a duplicate feature which allows you to stack them or get rid of your duplicates. There's a fresh new look in the photo book area and you have eye-catching new templates for your printed creations. And last but not least, you can upload your videos directly from the organizers into YouTube. So let's go ahead and jump right into Photoshop Elements 10. Okay, the two areas that I'm going to show you are the text for one. If I click on this, you'll see that there are three new options here. So if I wanted to put text on selection, I would select that tool and then I would go and I would select an area. Once I have the area selected, I would check the green check box and then place my cursor near where I want my first letter to appear. If I click on it and I start typing the text, you can see that it traces my selection. The next text tool that we have is the ability to text on shape. So I click on this. Now you don't get all the shapes that you have in the custom shape tool, but you do have a few, and that would be the rectangle, things like ellipses, hearts, speech, speech bubbles, and butterflies. So let me go ahead and pick the speech bubble, and I'm going to select a speech bubble right here. I've got the speech bubble, and then if I place the cursor near where I want to start the text, I can click on it and I can type inside my speech bubble. Now just note that the text starts on the inside of the shape. The last text tool that we have is text on a custom path, so if you're really good with drawing things, I could go in here and I could draw a shape wherever I wanted the shape to be drawn could let go, I could check the green box right there, and then I could take my cursor very close to where my shape starts, or my path starts, and then I could start typing on it, and then I have my text on my path. Okay, Photoshop Elements has always had the ability to use the Smart Brush tool right here, and then pick one of the effects. Now what Adobe has added are 30 different options in the artistic, textures and tint. Let's go ahead and take a look at the artistic and let's pick pencil sketch. Now I'm going to select an area and then it's going to change that area into a pencil sketch. And there we have it. Now I have my plus and minus tool up here so if I want to add to that selection I can go ahead and add to that selection or if I got a little bit too much I could select the minus and then subtract from the selection. Let's go ahead and take a look at this because I want to show you some of the different options. So there we have the pencil sketch. Now if you don't want that to be quite as much of an effect on there of course you could always go down to the opacity and bring back some of the original in there because it is just a layer that they've added over the top of that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other things. You can also change it into an oil pastel and it's going ahead and change it right there. You can also go into the textures if you want to. You can add some of the different textures right there. You can use old paper if you want to. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. 
and there we have old paper. And last but not least, you have the different tints right here. Most people might want to do some sort of a sepia tint, and there we go. So those are the options in the full scale editor right there. I am going to go to edit and I'm going to go to revert right now. I want to take this back to my original picture and I want to show you the guided tour now. So let's go ahead and click on the guided tour. One of the first new tools that we're going to look at in the guided tour is the depth of field tool. We have two options right with there where we can add a simple one. Let's go ahead and go through the guided tour. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a blur to the whole thing. That kind of makes it out of focus and then we're going to take the gradient tool and we're going to start from the area that we want in focus and we're going to drag it a little bit off of the focus and as you can see that's the simple one. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I don't really like that and I'm going to go back to depth of field but this time I'm going to choose the custom one. Now takes you through the number one. We want to pick the quick selection tool. So I'm just going to select one area real quickly here that I want in focus. These are really great if you just don't have time and you want Photoshop to do a lot of things for you. Okay, so we have this area selected. Then we're going to add the blur. So that's going to make everything in the background seem a little bit out of focus. And then if you wanted to add just a little bit more blur, we could slide this to the right. Now be careful because it's going to make things appear very unrealistic if you give it too much blur. Let's go ahead and hit cancel. Okay, the next thing I'm going to cover in the guided tour is the Orton effect. And that kind of gives this really nice glowy effect right here if you see that. I'm going to add the Orton effect to this picture. Right now it kind of blows it out a little bit but I'm going to increase some of the blur on here to kind of give it that dreamy look and then I'm going to take down some of the brightness and so that's kind of the Orton effect. It kind of gives it that dreamy look. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So those are the two areas that we have to actually change your photo. Now one of the photo play options that they've added here is the picture stack. So let's go ahead and click on that and then I could add a picture stack to this. Now this is what looks like when you're adding Polaroids to a table. You're kind of throwing Polaroids on the table and it creates a picture. So that's kind of the effect that they're going for right here. So it breaks up your picture into a number of smaller pictures there and then you can choose what size border width you want. So I want a large border width and there we have it. So it kind of gives it that picture stack look. So those are the new options in the guided arena. Okay, the next thing that we're going to check out is the create tab right there. And underneath photo book, if you click on photo book right there, it gives you some new options you can see with the little red yellow banner right there. It gives you some new options of the different types of books that you can make with your photos. Let's go ahead and hit cancel there. Now I want to go to jump to the organizer. Once we're in the organizer and you start tagging people, family and friends right there, you can directly go to Facebook when you go to share and it will automatically tag these people with the faces. You also have the ability to share your videos on YouTube directly from the organizer. I hope you had a good time touring Photoshop Elements 10, the new options in the organizer, the new options in the full-blown editor, and the new options in the guided tour. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my video Give me a thumbs up, tell others about my video, and pass along my link. Cheers!